Hi everyone, welcome to day 55. Um, pretty incredible that we went right past 50 and already now one week, one week later. Um, so I have a, a new location just for a little bit for at least these like next 10, 10 days uh, with this really nice natural lighting. So I'll try and try and take advantage of it as much as possible. Um, so this is the second day or third day, depending on how you count it, of this project that I'm doing called 12 Days of Figure Drawing. Um, and it was kind of like this inspiration about around the holidays to just kind of like, I don't know, commit to some project that was kind of related to this, this time period and see if we can like follow through on it a little bit. Um, also, I've been really into figure drawing lately, so I'm like pretty excited to kind of get into it and, and do more with, with figure drawing. Um, funny enough, I noticed that on Proko, on Stan Prokopenko's channel, um, there's, they're also doing uh, kind of like a celebration for, tw for, for these like 12 day period and they're doing what's called 12 days of Proko. Um, which for which there's actually some really great content. Um, so if you're a fan of Proko or if you haven't seen him before, his channel is is probably one of the like most fundamental, most basic, like a great place to start for learning figure drawing. Um, and it, it's it's also where I've learned a majority of of what I know. Um, and of course, I'm still a learner. I'm still a student of of all this art as well. So let's talk a little bit uh, about this drawing. So. Um, I found a, so in addition to Proko actually, another great resource for learning uh, about drawing, learning about art, is Chris Legospi. Um, and Chris Legospi is from a different kind of school of artists. So, so there's kind of like two, a few different schools of, of artists that have kind of come up in this like YouTube space. So you have Stan Prokopenko, who's kind of came up through what's known as like the Watts Atelier. Um, and I've talked about that in the past peer, in the past, but this is the atelier that's run by Jeff Watts um, that also puts out content on YouTube, some really great content. Um, but another kind of like, let's say school or, or person who does a lot of, of teaching content um, is Steve Houston. Uh, and Steve Houston is famous for these paintings that are of these like boxers and these really dynamic poses. Um, and Steve Houston has a really awesome approach to art as well. That's actually quite different from, from Watts Atelier. Like the basics are still the same since it's illustration. So thinking about structure, thinking about anatomy, these are still similar. Uh, but even the way that they, like if you sit down and watch a Jeffrey Watts drawing and a Steve Houston drawing, you can see them evolve in such different ways. Like the process is really where, where things differ. Um, and so <clears throat> Chris Legospi kind of comes from the Steve Houston school. Um, and he, he has put together some videos that are, in my opinion, are some of the best actually, by the way, for, I prefer them even, like I think pro, they both have their advantages, but I prefer Chris Legospi's uh, uh, style of teaching and his work to, to, to Stan Prokopenko. But again, both are amazing. Um, and all this is to say that uh, uh, Chris Legospi put together this Pinterest board that has about 150 uh, different poses or different figure drawing references. Um, and the great thing is that because he kind of comes from this Steve Houston school, these are like very dynamic, very exaggerated, very in motion figures, which is kind of what Steve Houston is known for. As I said, there's a lot of these like boxing poses, uh, but even his like female figures, he tends to pick less like passive poses and more like dynamic poses. Um, and so it's a really great list of references. So um, the plan is in these next 12 days and, and probably honestly after this, probably for like the foreseeable future, uh, <clears throat> this Pinterest board is what I'll be working through in terms of references. And you can see a link to this Pinterest board uh, in the link below. So here I've chosen one of these uh, figures that's actually kind of a less dynamic pose, um, but it has, you know, I think what's great about this is that it really has the anatomy well-defined. And this is kind of what, what drew me to it. I think it's great, like, especially in this stage right now that I'm in where I'm learning, I'm really drawn to these to the poses that kind of have uh, are more exaggerated, where I can really see the difference between like see where muscles begin and see where muscles end, and as opposed to you know <clears throat> less defined, uh, someone who's like let's say less cut, it can be a little more difficult to understand where the underlying anatomy is. Which once you, once you I think you have a good foundation of anatomy and a good understanding that that is fine and it's not an issue. But for me, I kind of prefer um, prefer right now to 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 be able to see this anatomy. Um, and so I think this is like pretty straightforward. I can talk a little bit about kind of my process, which again is adapted from like an approach by Proko, an approach by Chris Legospi, and kind of just a mashup of all of the different things that I've learned and places that I've learned from. Um, and so the way that I always start is I start with the portrait, um, a circle for the, or I start with the head, a circle for the head or an oval for the head, and then I draw the neck, and then I find the lines for the shoulders. 
Um, and generally the tilt of the shoulder, so let's say the shoulder tilt and this one is, it's, it's very subtle, but there is kind of a shoulder tilt that's going this way. Generally speaking, like 98% of the time, the hips will be on the opposite diagonal. And this creates what Steve Houston calls like the pinch, right? And so the idea is like every pose has one side of the body that's stretched out. So in this case, it's the, it's the left side of the drawing or the right side of the figure is slightly stretched out. And the other side is like slightly pinched. So you start to get this like, yeah, this, this motion where you have some kind of curls that generally occur like above the, below the uh, obliques and then kind of that little fatty pad that sits, sits above the hip. Um, and so, you know, I always start by trying to find that. And then recently, a few days ago, I, I did a uh, master copy by Eric Gist. Um, and one thing I noticed was like, he really exaggerates the use of like these C curves and these S curves. Um, and so on this drawing, I really tried to put in those C's to kind of emphasize. And you can see in the beginning of the video, I had to kind of put these in. Um, and then in the rest of the video, I'm slowly, slowly, slowly. Uh, at some point I do need to get faster, but for this stage right now, I'm just kind of slowly, slowly, slowly trying to find the shape. And this is what I call like the 2D construction or what Chris Legospi calls the 2D construction, I should say. Um, so I'm trying to find the shape of the figure. Before I put in any anatomy, I kind of want an outline, almost like a chalk outline. Like if you imagine, you know, the, how, how police do the chalk, chalk outline after, you know, a homicide or something like that. I'm almost doing a chalk outline of the figure first. Um, just to kind of get a sense of how it exists in space. Uh, and I'm using like a lot of different ways of measuring. So I'm using like plumb lines. So basically finding pieces of the figure and drawing a line straight down and seeing, you know, what, what, what it intersects with. Uh, I'm taking, paying attention to the negative shape, to the negative space. Like what's the shape of the negative space. Um, with the body, since there's symmetry, you have this idea of angles, which is really great. So let's say I draw, you know, um, the, the, in the reference, he has this really nice deltoid. So let's say I draw the deltoid here on this side. I can check in the reference what is the angle to the bottom of the other deltoid. And that kind of gives me an idea of if my, if my drawing is oriented correctly. Um, and I'm just doing working through all of these kind of like very slowly. Um, and, and this is where I'm really trying to build up skill actually, is, is being able to like make these really nice measurements um, and, and get a good block in or a good lay in, a good 2D construction of the figure. Then after that, I can start to implement some of this anatomy knowledge that we've learned. Um, and for right now, I think I'm gonna keep the anatomy talk kind of short, but I actually have this great idea of like, since, since I'm a student of uh, anatomy, and I think that a lot of the people that follow me are students of anatomy too, um, that we can kind of learn a little bit together. And I was thinking of, in January of making it kind of like an anatomy month where for one month we really, like maybe I'll throw in some other things every once in a while just to you know break up the monotony. But for the most part, for one month, the central focus will be uh, studying the anatomy. Um, and I thought that would be kind of cool. Like, so we have four weeks in January. I was thinking something like, uh, you know, one week for the torso, front side, one week for the back torso, one week for the arms and one week for the legs, some, something like that. Um, so you, you can feel free to drop a line or drop a comment if you have some thoughts on that. Um, but anyway, so without getting into too much detail, I work in the anatomy based on some of the previous drawings that we've done. So if you kind of look, I think like around day, somewhere in the day 30s, I did some studies of the torso and kind of got an understanding of like the pectoral muscles. Um, I got an understanding of like how the abs sit, how the obliques sit. Um, and then again, like the deltoids and pieces of the arms we connect. Uh, the, the, and I actually skipped one thing, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned. Bef once I have the 2D construction in, I then put in this idea called, known as landmarks. Um, and landmarks are 100% arbitrary. I think this is something that needs to be understood a little bit more. A landmark is whatever you choose as a landmark, but it's something that you can kind of put into the figure first that kind of helps you orient where the uh, anatomy should sit. Now, generally speaking, your landmarks are kind of are, are, there are some commonly understood landmarks because they make sense, but they are your own choice, right? You pick whatever you want. Um, so on this figure, I've had some really nice landmarks that were kind of formed by the armpit, by the shadows that occurred here. But some other, you know, great landmarks are the center of the neck, like where, where the clavicle, like you have these clavicle bones, right? Where they meet here. Um, also where the kind of, there's this, where the clavicle meets and it creates this little divot on the top of the shoulder. This is like where the trapezius comes down. And, and there's a name for this actually that I can't remember right now. It's escaping me. Um, but those also make kind of natural landmarks. The belly button is a great landmark. So kind of thinking about these kinds of things. Um, and I think that's everything for, for this one. So we'll talk again uh, tomorrow.